early Valentine's Day, everybody. And um, I've already done these films. I've done the My Bloody Valentine original and the My Bloody Valentine remake. Um, but Kaylee had never seen them, so this will be a first time watch discussion for her and we're more going to do and this is something we've uh, been discussing about doing um we are going to do a remake versus the original comparison our thoughts on what works better on what works less you know yeah um yeah. and just the things that i noticed that were noteworthy for yeah. the comparisons because I get into that a little in my reviews, I'm sure of these, but just doing one like this could be fun, or maybe it won't at all. <laughs> you know, this would be a total fun. waste of everyone's time, but no. No. I got my Valentine right here, my bloody Valentine. Should have poured blood on myself. I have fake blood. Yeah? Fake. But why not use real blood? No, not your own. Whoa, no, jeez. Not mine. <laughs> Definitely. Which More yours. Am I supposed to use? Some random person. Alright. Some Pause other... video. Yep. Yeah. Pause. Alright. <laughs> so my bloody Valentine. Alright, first thing we should talk about is everybody see my thoughts on these two movies. What were your thoughts on these? Because Kaylee Every time I show her an 80s slasher, it seems to uh, work out pretty well. Yeah. Although I seem to pretty much only show you the good stuff outside of maybe Bloodhook. But uh, even Bloodhook, like, as much as it's so long and ridiculous, I just, there's such a charm to 80s slashers that I really love. Yeah. Um, and I loved this one. I thought it was really wonderful. I like the design of the killer. I think that the gas mask is really creepy, um, but it's not like a Halloween mask, so, and it fits, obviously, with the plot of the story. Um, I like the characters. There's a, the friend of, and I don't know people's names, but the one friend of the main girl that has, um, is it TJ and Axel? Isn't it Sarah? Sarah? Her oh, friend is really yeah, funny sorry. in the original. She has a couple lines. She was like, I'm going to be wearing a dress, like, cut down to there. And, and whoa, up to here. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it has all those, like, fun characters um, mm -hmm. that a lot of 80s slashers have. And there's some really cool kills. The uh, washing machine one, or the dryer, is my favorite. Yeah. Um, and I had no idea, really, who the killer was going to end up being like throughout the movie i told you who i wanted it to be and it, uh, it ended up being not him um so you know i thought there was really good mystery and atmosphere and i just really enjoyed it i thought it was a good time and the ending's really creepy too so, like the last line of the movie with be my bloody yeah <laughs> it's great well i mean you i guess the writers of the remake agreed with you because in the original, you wanted it to be TJ, and yes. it ends up being Axel. Uh-huh. And in the remake, they flip that, and it ends up being TJ. Yeah. So, so that's who you wanted it to be. It and, is. And I guess it's like you wrote the, see, the, the remake. Yeah, well, I think that, so like with the remake, I also really loved the remake, actually. I thought that it was a really cool twist on the original, and I think it makes a lot of sense that it would be TJ. Um, obviously, the way the original is written, you know, it's Axel's dad is killed by Harry Warden, so he, you know, develops a complex, and that's that's what happens, and that makes sense, and that's fine. But with TJ feeling like all this guilt for, you know, killing people, and well, I guess for he killed people, and then Harry Warden also killed people. Anyway, there's a lot of guilt around that, and then he he disappears and develops a complex around that issue and then returns to town, and I think that that works really well with the story. Um, the I, don't, I think that there's probably a lot of people who don't like that it's TJ having these, like, um, what PTSD. are they called? Like, yeah, multiple personality type mm. of, you know, he's sort of uh, acting out his trauma. But I really like that psychological take on it. I thought it was cool, and I like the visuals, especially at the end. When it's revealed that it is, uh, well, I guess his name is Tom. Tom in this, but 
um, when he's walking down the mine shaft and like smashing the lights and it flashes to him dressed as Harry Warden and back to him. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And uh, they kept the washing machine or dryer kill in yeah. this one. Yeah, the homage. Which I love. Um, and then also there's a ton of other really, really great kills in the remake. So So which one wins the day for you? Mm, it's hard because I really liked both of them. And I, I think that, um, I don't know, I guess... I guess I'll say the the remake because it's a little gorier. I thought the and I really I mean the the 3D bits are kind of annoying, but the kills I thought were just wonderful. So I guess I'll say the remake, but I it's a hard choice for me because the original is really amazing too. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that with this remake that more people don't complain about the twist twist mm. um you know the reveal twist i suppose with i mean i can't think of many movies that they've remade where the killer ends up being the complete opposite person yeah. that's a pretty rare thing and i feel like you know with like rob zombies halloween 2 making michael utter a word um or even Halloween 1, where he's a child and he utters words, lots of them. There was, like, such a backlash against just a character fucking speaking. Like, making the killer a completely different person. But then again, like... I don't... I don't know. It's a fine line, right, I suppose. Like, a remake is supposed to be somewhat in vain of the original mm -hmm. right but it's also supposed to be its own thing mm -hmm. and i do think that both work i think that if you have they're both psychological right they're both about trauma ptsd dealing with something from years back um one is a child and one is more of an adult mm -hmm. uh, when it happens but that doesn't mean that you still can't be completely you know, devastated and influenced and changed because of these horrible events, no matter what age you are. So I do like that. I, I just, I've not really seen almost anybody ever discussing that, like, this change was made. Now, I wasn't in horror groups online back when the remake came out to my memory. So if there was a backlash about it, I missed it. But since it's not one that's like stuck around, mm. like a lot of other ones are like people still bitch about all sorts of twists or yeah. changes in, in all sorts of franchises. So this is just not one that I've noticed. But um, as far as like the one that I would prefer, I agree that the kills in the remake are better um but the feel of the original yeah. is better see that's what the and that's thought. what matters yeah. to me more mm, that matters more to you in mm. in this regard because if you put the kills from the remake into the original oh god <laughs> then it would be you know the perfect film for yeah. that but it's not to say that there isn't i mean obviously as you said the dryer kill um, which isn't even a kill. It's a, it's an aftermath yeah. reveal. Uh, I was surprised going back at how tame my bloody Valentine, the original was, um, because I do have the stream factory uncut with the added, like, you know, sprinkler freaking, uh, shower head through the, through the back of the girl's neck and it sprang out mm -hmm. of her mouth. I just remember that being way more graphic, uh, and it's really just not. Uh -huh. And I was I was pretty surprised by that. So, um, my bloody Valentine, even the uncut version, is is pretty light. It's pretty tame, and and this is just yet again bringing up once again another point of mine of like, why, what, what audience are you making this for? Mm. Like, give us our kills. It's what we're there for, and and. Netflix and, and Amazon or whoever the hell needs to jump on this and just make the most violent ass slasher movie because they don't have to 
they don't have to get approved for a rating. Yeah. You know, just have it, you know, have a big fucking warning before the film. No kid should <laughs> watch this under 18. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's no joke. I don't think, I don't know what company would have the balls to do it, but they, somebody needs to do it because if you want to appeal to the fan base, if you really want to land with mm-hmm. that, like, serious cult legend status of slashers, then they need to hire me. <laughs> and they need to give me a budget and I need to use 90% of that budget on the kills. Yes. Well, and like you were saying though with the original uh, My Bloody Valentine, the feel is, you know, it's that 80s slasher that's so wonderful, but that's why it's such a hard choice for me between the original and the remake. Because if, if I had never seen the remake, I would have been totally stoked and happy with the original, but having the remake to compare the kills to... And it's just hard because I really loved like it's just there's so much in the remake that was really cool. Yeah. So. But even the remake is nowhere near graphic enough. Like it could be more for sure. I want I want people vomiting in the theater. <laughs> With how graphic or like, on that's an when actual person yeah. that they're killing. I want people upset. I want protests. I want the fucking, like, film to be banned in multiple countries. Like, I want... <laughs> I want a snuff film. Yeah. But like, not a snuff film, but basically. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's a slasher film to me. Yeah. Any, but, like... In a slasher film, if you're watching it and you're like, oh, my God, that was too much. Or, like, oh, those kills shouldn't have been. Like, oh, no, I'm just there for, like, the story. And, you know, I, I, I prefer the cutaway kills then don't watch slasher movies. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sorry. Turn the fucking TV off. Go watch whatever else you want. (laughs) Like, that... Slasher movies are about the slashing. Yeah. They're slashers. Yeah. I want slashing. A slasher movie with zero gore and kills in it that we see graphically on screen is all but pointless to me outside of very rare examples Mm. where it's more just about the fun and this and that, like a happy death day or something where I don't really care. Now would happy death day be better with graphic over the top, insane kills one trillion percent to watch tree die Uh 50 different times in 50 different gruesome ways. You get to kill the same character like of any fucking film I can think of that needs it. It actually would be that one. But yeah. it still gets away with it. It's still entertaining. Which is just anyways. Yeah, I don't want to get too far off point here. But it's just anytime I bring up slashes, I'm always just so disappointed with the, the level <laughs> of gore and violence on yeah. screen. I need it to be fucking chaos. <laughs> I want to nice. see people torn apart. Screaming for their <laughs> lives. Yeah, I'm fucked in the head, I guess, because a lot of people I've taught, I've seen on there, they're like, oh, I, you know, I've seen people are like, I like, I don't want to watch any movies where, and even your friend that just did her hair, Mm. right? She was telling me that, like, she doesn't want any death to be sad or Mm. have any length to it. Mm. It wants, she wants it to be one and done, like, Mm. out, like somebody gets hit with a machete and their head comes off immediately Mm. anytime that they feel like they're hurt Mm. that they're in peril that they're screaming that they're in pain they don't like it it. and it's like that's interesting that's horror man what are you talking about that that tripped me out from a horror fan interesting yeah well and i i mean i love the kills because it's like you know if they're done with practical effects it's just so impressive like the more realistic and the more graphic they are from a technical standpoint, like it's just really impressive to see. And then the emotion of the characters that are dying, like that's how you're connecting to them because obviously the projection of the viewer is what would I do in that situation? And um, I don't think you really get that connection if it's just such a quick kill. Like if you're there with them, following them for five minutes while they're trying to escape from a killer and then trying to fight back and trying to save themselves and then it just, you know, they have that gruesome death. It's a lot more of a gut punch than if it's just like, you know, something that happens really, really quickly. I can say this. In all the movies that I've watched, and I've watched quite a few now in my life, um, especially in the horror genre and especially in the slasher subgenre, I've seen as many as pretty much anybody. I've yet to ever see a slasher movie truly deliver on gore. 
mm-hmm. like truly like shock me mm-hmm. level of what the fuck did I just watch? Because the films that usually go for it, like really try to go for it, like a hundred tears or something that has like fucking 50 kills on screen in it, their budget is this big and everything looks like shit. Mm. So it doesn't look insane, mm-hmm. right? Like I need some pure insanity on screen like the terrifier saw kill you know times 50 like with uh, so anyways do you guys agree Uh, that's what i'm curious on am (laughs) i just totally fucked in the head here or do you feel like slasher films rarely deliver or if ever deliver fully on the gore that you want i'm just curious on that um are you guys like watching slashers and they're like no i like the cutaways like That's your own prerogative, and that's fine. I just... Slasher seems like a weird subgenre for people to get into that don't want to see graphic violence. Like, this is what I don't understand about the MPAA or any of this. It's like, who do you think is going to these movies? I get it. Oh, the kids could see it. Fuck the kids. Make (laughs) a goddamn gruesome, violent-ass slasher movie. All right? So, you know... Friday the 13th, part four, final chapter, beefed up. Beefed up. Just pure insanity. All right, moving on. We talked about that for way too long. (laughs) Um, All right, so the differences that I noticed. Harry Warden killed everyone to conserve his oxygen. In the original, he's eating people to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Uh, In this one, he's killing them because they're trapped and they're running out of air. Um, So... It went from cannibalism to Mm -hmm. self-preservation. Although I guess they're both self-preservation, but, you know, a different spin on Mm self-preservation anyway. Uh, There is a one-year time jump here as opposed to a 20-year time jump. That's a a major jump here. But, of course, with the characters as they're portrayed and the reveal that we get... Obviously, we're not dealing with a child growing up. We're dealing with a man who goes off, deals with his issues. Not really. <laughs> or the and man comes back. to deal with his issues. Yeah. Um, I did think they did a fairly good job. So, I'd be curious on a first-time watcher who's never seen the original... What they would think of the twist. Is that super obvious? I mean, he is the obvious killer of the film. Yeah. I thought it was very obvious. Not only just in the way it was, like, set up with the story. But also, like, the specific scene that was, like, really cueing me in that it was him. um, Is when he goes to the mine after um, running into Sarah. Yeah. Uh, at the grocery store or they take a walk and she's like, you shouldn't sell the place. Like the town depends on it. And he goes there supposedly to talk to whoever and tell him he's not going to sell it. And the guy that he's with all of a sudden, Harry Warden starts yeah. attacking and he's locked in this little yeah. metal container. And when Harry Warden walks up to him, like the, their movements are mirrored exactly. Like, okay. so he's like bending down and they like, they stand up at the same time and, I don't know if they move their heads at the same time, but anyway, it's like very clearly like a mirrored effect, which is obviously just really out of character for Harry Warden. It doesn't really make sense that he would be toying with him rather than just killing him. Yeah. Um, So for me, that was a giveaway, but I I think that if somebody hadn't seen the original, they probably would guess it pretty early on because there's not really a lot done to set Axel up. I mean, he's a shitty person. Like, you know, he's cheating on his wife with his wife's employee who's pregnant and you know it's just like he seems like a douchebag but aside from that we don't really get any other like and obviously he leaves tom um you know makes eye contact with him in the beginning and just leaves but aside from those two things like he's not doing anything that would make you hyper suspicious of him yeah you know? i mean obviously they're trying to convince you that it's harry warden yes. or that it's potentially axel or it's potentially tom tj Um, but what I'm wondering is if the writers of this were, and the, one of the writers is actually in this as the trucker who's banging the chick and recording it. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
I have to I have to assume I don't really know for sure obviously but my I guess my question more to say is that with the way they did this version of the twist were they writing it with the understanding that the audience would already know what the twist is mm. so they had to subvert expectations make it like very obvious that it's going to look like it's TJ, but that it's actually Axel, but uh uh-oh, we Mm. flipped it on you. It is actually TJ. So are they banking on the audience already knowing the twist? I mean, this Mm. is, most of the people in the audience probably have seen the original or don't. I don't know. I don't know what the percentage would be, but did they write this with the twist in mind? Trying to subvert the expectations of the people who already knew the twist? Or did they write it in mind with a new, fresh audience? I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's the former. I feel like it's they knew the audience was going to know. Yeah. And they wanted to dupe them. And be like, ha ah, we switched it on yeah, you. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that it's probably written under the assumption that a lot of viewers would have seen the original and known the twist. Because they do play with it a bunch, but I think if you've never seen the original, that you probably would be able to guess what it is fairly easily. So, it's interesting. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, I mean, the, the obvious thing here is that Tom is out of town, and as soon as he comes back, the murders start happening. Sure. And the attacks. Because, yeah, I mean, you thought, and, and I was all about this, actually, because I couldn't really fully remember how the movie went. I knew who the killer was. Um, so then, like, I knew once I saw Tom that this wasn't what was happening. Um, but what she thought was happening in the opening is, like, we're in the mine with the kids. At, well, they're not really kids. They're fucking adults at this point, but whatever. Young adults. Uh, we're in the mine with them, and then the killer just starts killing and like everyone's aware of it. And man, I would have been down for that movie. Like throw away the whole twist ending and the lover's triangle and all that stuff. I mean, you could even have the, the, the love triangle, um, but just kind of down in the mines where they're just running from Harry Warden for, for the film. Like, and we find out through their, you know, running around in the mines that Harry Warden, was buried a year earlier or something and everyone thought he was dead, but he's still down there, you know, maybe have some mention of it in the opening Mm. when they're sitting out there talking like Harry Warden was buried in that mine and no one's seen him again. And then boom, just cut right to the killing. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to escape the mine and they go deep down and just make that the whole movie. Yeah. And then the end, you know, they bury Harry Warden again and, and get out and whoever dies, dies and so on and so forth. Like, I'm fine with the movie we got. I just, I don't know. I can't think of many slasher movies that just kind of start at a hundred and keep it going till the end. Mm. Right? Like they got to like do the, the cold open where they come in and they do the kill and then they show the title and then they slow things back down and then they build back up to the suspense. Like, see, that's the kind of, I wrote a slasher movie. It's the only one I've written so far and it starts at chaos and it fucking never lets up and it's just chaos throughout and then it's just credits. Yeah. Right? I mean, that definitely takes you off guard because you are used to the formula of a slasher movie. So that's why, like, when that started happening in the opening, I was like, oh my gosh, like, we're already, we're like, no backstory. Which, I mean, it, it, the chaos is good, right? Like, it does make you feel more frantic when you're watching it and much like the characters, right, are feeling frantic to try and save themselves. So... It would have been really cool, but I, I like the way that it was done, you know, the way we got it, too. Yeah. So, And I also like the love triangle, I have to say. I think in both movies, it's a, I just enjoy it. I think I like it a little more in the original, though. I like both, well, TJ I was really into, and Axel I like, too, though, but I think that they're, like, the way that they both treat Sarah feels like legit like they're you know fighting over her but they both want to be good to her but obviously in the remake I was super against Axel because he's a piece of shit (laughs) and Tom is like you know attractive and dreamy but also 
obviously there's something off with him too so i think it works a little better in the original with the chemistry of the actors and everything but so i'd like to make an uh, I don't know, amend something actually so there is a one year jump from when tom buries harry warden until that opening sequence then we jump ahead 10 years yeah so there is a time jump more there it's just the first initial time jump right. is one year and then we jump ahead 10 more years and that's how long tom's been gone when he when he ends up showing back up and that's when we get sarah and axel are married and yeah. they have a child who's like six or seven or something mm -hmm. um so anyways I, I, I we just met the one year opening where there's yeah. this like jump um in time where because we thought in that opening like oh this is going to be the movie mm -hmm. like it's just a one year jump and harry warden's killing everybody which is cool with me but that's mm -hmm. just not what happened anyways that's 10 years later um they also changed the okay so harry warden obviously in the original is in a, like a mental institution and then they're calling around and and finally by the end of the movie they find out that Harry Ward died like years ago. Mm -hmm. um, as in with this one, there's some kind of like Freddy Krueger-esque thing going on here where the townspeople like rallied together after he was stopped and hunted him down, killed him, buried the body and kept it from everybody. Um, so that's a pretty significant change because Tom goes out and finds his body. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm not sure how I'm he not knows sure how he finds it where the body is. Maybe I missed that. I, no, I don't remember actually at all that ever being explained. He just know knows where the grave is and he finds it and he takes the outfit and he's wearing Harry Warden's actual, actual outfit. outfit he was yeah. murdered and buried in. That thing's got a stink, man. I Maybe that's that... why he was at the laundromat. To do some laundry. Yeah. Yeah, but I thought that exact thing too. I was like, oh my god, there's been a dead body in there. He's gonna just wear it, and it's a gas mask. Like, so I do love like... that it's actually Harry Ward's yeah. outfit that he's wearing. I do right? too. And that because that he believes he's him, so yes. he uses his outfit. So I think all that's really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but that is a significant change there as well. And sure. and if you're gonna do a remake, remake it. Yeah. You know, like, well, why... this is the way to do it, in yeah. my opinion. Like, change it up. He got the suit from Harry Warden, and they buried him, and you get Tom Atkins himself coming in and, and being one of the guys who kills him and buries him, and all that is, is very cool. So, yes. um, I mean, I'm into the changes, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, this does have that, like, more pristine feel to it in the remake yeah. versus the grittiness yeah. of the 80s, and that's pretty much always going to be the comparison should, when you're doing an 80s versus modern horror remake they should just film on older cameras when they remake these it still just doesn't have like, the same feel. i know but like some about, of it's that some of it's definitely the film itself you know making mm, it different yeah i don't know i i honestly i've been trying to figure that out what makes a film feel like it did back then Ty West's House of the Devil is definitely one of the closest things I've ever seen to genuinely recreating the feel of the time period he mm -hmm. set it in. Um, you know, it, it's it's really hard to do. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do. And um, it depends on the movie. Sure. It depends on the movie. If you're going to set it in the 80s, um, then sure, make it look like it's filmed in the 80s. But if it's set modern day might feel weird for it to be in 2022 and look like it was shot in the 80s. Mm. Like if the film was made know. in the 80s. I think I'd be into it actually because it's, I don't know. I, I guess I'd have to see something. It would have a totally different feel. It would, it's but modern. I feel like I might be into it. I'm not so saying it wouldn't work. I'm saying it would be weird. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah. Mm. Um, all right. Then we got the town name change from... Valentine's okay. Bluff to Harmony. Yeah. These are weird choices. Um, this is like Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, changing the family name mm. from the Sawyers to the Hewitts. Like, those are weird ones. Those are ones that I wonder if there's some kind of trademark yeah. or licensing thing. But some if they can, like, 
they named Tom, TJ Tom. Yeah. And obviously TJ, T is for Tom, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Um, why they didn't call him TJ? Don't know. That's another. It's, it weird. it's Axel, Sarah and Axel, Sarah. but not TJ. Yeah. But they just were like, well, TJ, what's TJ stand for? Yeah, I don't know. You know, they could have called him TJ here and there. And then like maybe because Sarah knows him better, she sure. calls him Tom. You know, but yeah. just to completely ditch TJ and to ditch the name of the town, it's just... Those are odd choices. Like I don't, I don't understand the purpose of them. That so much to the point where I have to say, I have to think that there's something limiting them from yeah. doing it. Like they're like, no, you can't use that name. Right. You know, for some reason, like they weren't allowed to. Mm-hmm. If the writer or the or the director or whoever was just like, no, I'm just gonna change this name. It's weird, but for what? What reason, yeah, I don't what know. purpose does it serve? Just as like to a... Dis- like to kind of even further distance you from say. the original, but yeah. you're also, like you're using Sarah and Axel. Right. So how is Tom... And like Harry, yeah. And also Harry Warden. It's not yeah, like Harry Warden. Like, exactly. That's Larry. It has to be a, like a licensing, like rights issue yeah. or something. I think you're right. It's the only thing that makes any it sense. It's bizarre, to me. and it's—I mean, it's not like super annoying to me, but it would just—I don't see the need to but change they have it either. Everything else, exactly. What are, what I don't are the see odds why that they're like, change. you can use everything except for TJ and, Val- and <laughs> Valentine's blood? Yeah. Like that? What? No. No. Maybe they just thought like TJ sounded too old school. Of a name. It doesn't, though. It doesn't. TV I don't sounds... know. I'm going... I'm it's, just you know, it's like here. It's like whenever you're copying your friend's work in class, and you're like, oh, we can't have it match exactly. Like, change a couple... <laughs> but they did change. They <laughs> changed the twist. That's not big enough. I know. Like, they changed the period the... over here. Axel and Sarah are married. He's yeah. the sheriff. Like Right. He doesn't even work at the mine anymore. There's massive changes yes. here. I don't know. So, changing TJ's <laughs> name... Seems unnecessary, for To sure. Tom Jones... Everyone's like, oh, that's TJ. He's like, don't call me that. Not unusual <laughs> to be loved by anyone. Um, all right. So, yeah, we got Axel the cheater in here. That's a, that's a change. Uh, obviously, Axel and, and Sarah married with a child. Yeah. Um, I don't... It, it doesn't really matter where Sarah works. I don't even know if we get into where Sarah works in the original. No. Um, no. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't think it matters at all. It, it doesn't matter. She, works, she owns a grocery store, or she manages one. Yeah, it she doesn't say. matter in the slightest. Um, and yeah, I mean, one thing, a major change here, which I actually think is is good, but I also am okay with the original, is TJ's reasoning for leaving. Now, this one on the surface is more obvious of. And makes sense, like, a bunch of people got murdered, and he was left behind. Mm -hmm. Like, that's something I don't feel like they hit on enough. Like, I feel like Tom should be like, why the fuck did you turn your back on me? Why didn't you, why did you leave me, Sarah? Like, he, now, we fill that in as the audience, and we don't need those scenes, but I just think that would have been added drama that pushed on her, Mm -hmm. like, her own guilt, or if she brought that up more, like... I should have never left him behind. Like, or like, even if he ends up being the killer and then she's out at the um, ambulance and she's just like, I feel responsible for this. I, you know, you, sure. you should have never let me, you know, leave him behind. Look what's happened to him now. Like he used to be such a great guy. Yeah. And now because of what we did to him, look at what, he, what's become of him or, or any of those things. But, but in the original, we have no idea why TJ leaves. Now, this is by design yeah. to make it seem like he's suspicious sure. that he's up to something. That he, you know, he left and now that he's come back, the murders have started. And he came back specifically for Valentine's Day because of the dance. Like, you're filling in those blanks in your head like, oh, it's got to be TJ because, you know, he's mysterious. And why did he leave? We never find out why TJ leaves. Not that I remember ever being No, sad. there's some vague conversation between him and Sarah um, you know where she's like why did you just like not tell anybody and, and go away and he's like I made a mistake and you yeah. don't know what it was like out there or something like that yeah so that's not, the, that's not a reason no there's no reason given that but we get a very good reason why Tom yes. leaves and yes. uh, but in the original yeah it's just left vague as hell 
And as I said, on purpose to make him look more suspicious. But I, I like that that we get a legit reason, and and uh, it ends up tying very heavily into why he's doing what he's mm -hmm. doing. Um, and we've got um, there's no dance. There is no dance. There's no Valentine's dance there's here. Kind he's just of coming. There's dance in the beginning. They're partying. They're partying. So. But yeah, there's no dance that people aren't allowed to come back to. Uh, or do again. He's not threatening the sheriff like that with like, you can't let this happen again. How dare you have Valentine? Like in this one, it's just, I'm killing everybody. Yeah. Right? There's no real like warning. Right? Like he, he sends, he sends Axel a heart in the box, you know, the kind of iconic thing, but there's no like warning attached. No like, call this off or this happens again. Right. It's just kind of like, I'm killing bitches. Yeah, he's set on the And you bench. can't do nothing yeah. about it. Yes. Right? Now, why he's killing, who he's killing and all that, I don't really know. Like, why he kills the grocery store girl, you know, I guess in well, order to frame Axel, yeah. right? He's been following him around. But, and like, he kind of just kills says. random. I mean, he kills the I mean, girl, the, the girl at, with, at the truck stop or at the um, motel. Yeah, she is was Axel's girlfriend from the beginning. Right. And she was there when they left. So it makes sense for him. But what to about the girl in the dryer? Yeah. And the, and the, and the little person who runs she, the hotel. Uh, she, she just. She uh, was there. Yeah, she was so just there. She was a witness. But the, the dryer girl? Yeah. Who was that again? You're right, though. There is connection. There's to some a, connection to but most of them. Yeah, but there's, I think, some other but there's some random ancillary like ones, yeah, that are not. To up the body count. Right. Like the guy down in the mine. He was, yeah, I mean, it was just. He just works there? He was with them, yeah. And I, his, don't, I don't remember him having any attachment. Like, he fights him in the bar, uh, right? He does That's fight the, him in the bar. That's so he's just pissed off say. at him? Yeah. Okay, I guess that one. Well, who's the girl in the dryer again? I don't know. Though? I was like trying I'm to like trying to remember heart. that one. No, I'm like, we like, watched oh. both of these like a week ago. Yeah. So. Um, I don't. I don't remember. I feel so bad. Maybe she is connected. So maybe she I'm wrong on that. Maybe now that we've talked them out, I think almost every kill does make sense okay. and is attached to him in some way. Whether that person pissed him off when he came back to town, or you know, obviously one of them killed. Freaking uh, Harry Warden, Tom Atkins. Um, so all those make sense. I, I'll take that back. It's just that I was thinking about the dryer girl when I said it. Yeah. That's and it was like, it seems remember. random. But now mm -hmm. that I'm sure if I went back, I'd be like, oh, that chick's this chick. Mm -hmm. She's attached to this. So it makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. So I think I'm to totally off base. And I think it, there's nothing random about his kills. Aside from... Like, some people are just in the way, or yeah. some people are attached to people he wants to, you know, set up as the kill. So, yeah, that won't make yeah. sense, I guess. We'll, we'll have to look back at Dryer we'll look back Girl. and make sure we know who she is. Yeah, because, yeah, I mean, the truck stop guy is yes. just attached to the, the exactly. girl he's fucking. And yeah. uh, the little person with that runs the hotel is, is also just kind of a random bystander, yeah. collateral damage. Yeah. Um, but it's so obviously Tom. Like, he's in the footage outside, you know, the hotel right before he's she dies, there. the motel. He goes to the, yeah, he goes to the motel and hears them having sex. And, yeah, it's very obviously him. Yeah. Um, way more gore. We already mm -hmm. talked about this. Um, there's some good stuff. Uh, Tom Atkins, where he gets his jaw ripped off. Yeah, it was rad. It's pretty rad. The, the dryer kill. I, yeah. It's, I don't know. It's almost identical, Pretty so of much. course I'm gonna. She's just I'm just gonna more... prefer the original. Yeah, I actually prefer the, the original same. too, but because I don't know why, I prefer the original. Because it's the original. It's the original. Like if it's exact, if it's exactly the same, then I'm always gonna give the edge yeah. to the one who did it first. The new one's a little gooier. Mm. Mm hmm. There's also that, and Maybe I think the dryer realistic. one is like more crispy, and I like the crispier. If you put a human body into a dryer what and happens? you try to turn it on, it wouldn't turn on. It, it won't would turn off. Be too much weight. It would like maybe try to start and it'd be like error. It wouldn't what throw if it was a around. Really light human? It would have to be that like little child. girl who ran uh, the ho the little motel. Yeah. She probably wouldn't turn the dryer off. <laughs> uh, well, I like the dryer kill even if it's unrealistic. Oh sure, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Or no. the dryer. I don't. We don't even. It's not a kill. It's like they're dead and then they get put in there. 
Yeah, they kill them and then throw them in the yeah. dryer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the kills, I mean, um, yeah, the, the, the remake definitely edges out the original in the on-screen kills. Mm -hmm. There's also the, um, the suits dropping down homage yes, to the original. Which I love as well. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is identically the same. Um. And, yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, I, I feel like we compared pretty much everything outside of maybe, like, the actors. Yeah. You know, like, who do you prefer is TJ or mm. Axel or Sarah or... Well, I prefer the original TJ. Um, I like the new Sarah because we watched her recently in Black Summer. And I think she's a really great actress. Um, and she does a good job in this. Um, so I like her better as Sarah. I guess I like the old Axel too. But part of that might just be because the new Axel, I just am mad at him as a character. Well, but they he don't, does a good job. He doesn't... He doesn't, like, suffer any consequences for no. the things that he does. I know, that's He's what like we fucking, were upset about. fucking around on his wife. And I talked about this totally in yeah. my review for sure. But How he gets a kiss at the end yeah, and then I, like, love oh, I love you. And it's like, no way. Like, sure, you make it through. You're survivors together. You have that experience. But, like, clearly their relationship is not supposed to be romantic. Well, yeah, I mean, like... Like, it, it's just not. <laughs> as far as we know with Axel, he's just total self-centered asshole in this and basically in, in Axel's mind Tom does him a huge favor oh for sure right like Sarah still pines for Tom and he's got this girl knocked up that is not gonna keep this shit secret for very long no. right so he kills that girl and the kid taking that problem mm -hmm. out of his life and then he eliminates himself from the equation by getting, you know, revealing that he's a murderer and getting killed. Except for in this, he sneaks out at the end, um, you know, very Leon the Professional style. Which I like. Um, as opposed to losing an arm. Now, in yeah. this, he does not lose a limb like Axel does as he runs off into the mine. Uh, I'm assuming Axel died down there. Um, I would have liked to have seen a one-armed killer... In sure, this as the a one sequel. Armed man? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that would have been cool. I, I, I will definitely say that I prefer the original in almost every way. Mm -hmm. um, I still like this one. The remake, for sure. The kills are better. That's about it. Mm -hmm. um, the characters are definitely better than the original for me. Like, just the chemistry between everybody and the supporting characters the sheriff and 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 like the big you know the big guy with the cool In mustache the original, and, yeah like and yeah. then her friend who's making all yes. the jokes and all that like yeah I like the, the supporting characters really make this feel like a small town yes. where these kids all grew up together this one's a little too polished it's yeah. a little too disconnected it's a little too like it feels like a movie Feels like these guys are on set making a movie together. Yeah. The other yeah. one feels like a snapshot <laughs> of a time and a place with people who know one another mm -hmm. and, and have lived together and worked together for years. And down in the mine when they're showering and it's like, oh, we're going to woo! And they're like washing and they're jumping in their cars uh, and the banjo's playing and all that stuff. It's so you much know. fun. Yeah. I'm going to change. I'm going to say I like the original more because like when we talk about it, I do love all those things. But the kills for sure are better yes. in the new remake. Yes. I was, I'll leave it at that. But that's almost but always great. the case. That's almost always the case because special effects and, and these artists just, you know, with more money and, and with all the experience and growing up watching these movies. And, sure. You know, these guys paved the way. The Tom Savini's yeah. and the Rob Bottin's and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. They... They made these incredible special effects, and I do think they're incredible. And but I think that a lot of people do not give like old is gold mentality. Mm -hmm. They don't give anywhere near enough credit to today's special effects artists because they're so obsessed with like, 
oh, there was some CGI here, or, or some movies have CGI now, or all movies have CGI now, or whatever. And you're like missing out on how insane some of the effects are today. They're better than they used to be. Sure. Like they're absolutely. fucking insane. Like some of them, like watch Elijah Wood's Maniac. Oh my gosh. And there's some like flesh that they're cutting into and stuff on the, on like his leg and his face and all that. It looks legitimately real. Yeah. Like legit real. Look at fucking, you know, John Kramer's autopsy scene in Saw 4. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, that shit's incredible. Yeah. Like, you're not going to see anything like that in an 80s no. movie. They just didn't have the ability to do it back then. And it sure as fuck did not look real. I <laughs> like the fake feel of it to an extent, right? It's sure. nostalgic yeah. to see how kind of fake it looks, but kind of real. Yeah. And that was a, that was actually, like, a style, especially in mm -hmm. Italy. Mm -hmm. They, like, the purposely blood. made the blood not yeah. realistic because... It like cut down on the effect it had so that they could get a rating. Sure. Right? And yeah. so on and so forth. So, but regardless, we just have better special effects artists today. Yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of the times they're limited and they do go for CGI. I really wish we could have saw the thing prequel, mm -hmm. their, their actual effects that they did, and, and as opposed to the production company going, no, we're going to cover up all your practicals with CGI because that's what people expect today. Yeah. And I think you can, you can acknowledge and appreciate and enjoy the effects of today while still also loving the ones from like the eighties. You know, you did just because you like things that are out now doesn't mean that you also can't enjoy the ones from before. But like you were saying, like the old is gold, like that limits you from experiencing really cool um, effects in movies and I'm and enjoying them, you know, to the full extent. Better is subjective, right? Sure. So yeah. when I say better, I just mean that they look more real. Which so, isn't for everyone, like you said. Yeah, some people, some people want prefer it to, look, it to look a little more fake. Yeah, and I go both ways on it. Like I, you know, what we were talking about earlier with slashers, like if you can make it look super realistic, like that's really impressive to me. But I also like the kind of cheesy, corny, like clearly a dummy and not a real person. Like you that's mean, also like Howling like, Reborn. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like that too. But it's just it depends on the movie, right? Like every movie's different, and um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure I'll get a lot of pushback on that comment of that practical effects are better today. They're gonna be like, what about the thing? And what about sure. American Werewolf in <laughs> London? And what what have you ever seen that's better than that? <laughs> I mean, as I said, they look more real today when you're doing gore effects. Like, he, they human have perfected gore? like yeah. like Stabbing human and flesh. Into somebody. Like but when obviously... they cut people open, it is fucking so unbelievably realistic now. And I can see people being like. That's I don't like that. It's too real. Yeah, like it I, makes me feel like I'm watching somebody actually being murdered. Oh yeah. I mean, I have like a visceral reaction. Like every time I see someone like, like uh, really obviously like slitting wrists open, like I feel like my wrists start to feel weird and sure. bad. Same thing with like eyeball stuff. Like I just feel like my eyes are gonna actually pop when yeah. somebody's popping an eyeball. Yeah. But I still watch it and I make myself watch it anyway because I like it ultimately. <laughs> sure. So anyway, guys, uh, yeah, uh, watch Bone Tomahawk and uh, watch that kill because that's some of the most insane shit you'll ever see. And when Terrifier came out and they did the exact same kill, people were like all like, oh my God, that was crazy. And it's like, let's talk about Bone Tomahawk. That shit looks like real, like real murder. Like that <laughs> like is somebody murder. being fucking sawed in half. It's insanity so tell me that looks worse than any of the human gore you've seen in, in an 80s film and it will just slap you across the face not true <laughs> it's just not true you might prefer it but this one looks quote unquote better more real, more real. Uh, we'll go for real yeah, yeah good. <laughs> anyways <laughs> all right guys happy valentine's day i hope you have somebody i do finally mm. so mm. but if you don't he or she's coming soon. They're on their way. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Bye. Bye. <laughs>